Hi guys, my name is Karol. Welcome to Ads Courses, a YouTube channel where I give you the best digital marketing and web analytics tips and tricks. Today I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to create and send push notifications using Google Firebase. I'm gonna also talk about the best practices of using cloud messaging and show you how to read reports, also using BigQuery. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and follow it back with a like. Okay, so hold on to your hats and let's start. Okay, before you actually able to send cloud messaging in Firebase, you need to install the client app on Android or iOS application. You can find the full documentation on firebase.google.com right here. And once you do that, uh, when you go to the cloud messaging section, you will have two options right here. You have an option to create an experiment and an option to create new notifications without any experiments. So let's do that now. And here you can see that the whole process is split into five steps. So let's get through them now. The first one is the notification title. This is something that your users will be able to see. So for example, let's create a notification about a special promotion. Keep in mind that your notification title needs to be shorter than 30 characters if you want it to be displayed properly. And here you have the notification text, which may be actually longer than the title. And here you enter more details about, for example, your promotion. And it's also a good practice to use emote icons in your notifications. You can find them on the web, just Google it. Okay, so I've put in some emote icons in here, as you can see. Let's change it. Like that. And here we have the notification label. It's optional, but I would recommend that you fill it in. This is actually a name of the notification that is visible only for you in the Firebase interface. Okay. And here you can test the message and actually send it on your device. You need to know your registration token. You can get it from your developer. And once you put it in here, you can test and send the notification to this device. You need to keep in mind that this notification won't be visible in any reports. Okay, so ca let's cancel it now and let's move forward. And here we have the targeting section. And here you can select which segments of users or your app you want the notification to be sent to. So the first one is your app. If you have multiple applications in one project in Firebase, for example, iOS and Android, you can select it in here and you can add another targeting option. And here you have all the options available. So you can select the versions of your app that you want to be included. You can select the country or the region. You can select the language of your users. And here you have the user audiences that you need to actually create before in your audiences section in here. For example, based on user properties or events. You also have the user property, which also you need to create before. So for example, you can send a notification only to users who use the free version of your app or the premium version of your app. Next, we have the prediction. And this one is actually very interesting because you can send notifications to users that will most likely uninstall your app within seven days, for example, or that will buy something in your app in the next seven days. This functionality uses the machine learning to actually create this kind of user segments. Next, you've got the last app engagement. So you can target the users based on the last time they engage with your app. And you have the first open, so you can target the user based on the first time that they ever open your application. And you can actually combine all these targeting options together and create a very specific audience of your notifications. And here you have the prediction of the volume. Okay, let's go forward. And here you have the scheduling options. You can just leave it in here and send the notification right now. But let's say we don't want this. You can schedule your notification to be sent, let's say tomorrow at 12 p.m. Or you can create a recurring daily notification over here. Or you can create your own custom uh, schedule. So let's say you want the notifications to be sent every two weeks on Friday, for example. Right? Today we want to schedule 
this notification to be sent tomorrow at 12 p.m. for example. Next we have the conversion events. This is optional but I would recommend that you use it. Here you set up your goal of the notification. Normally you would uh, be able to see how many notifications were sent and how many were opened but you may also want to track the actions that they took in your application after they received the notification. So you can select your own custom event from the list, from your events that you created before. So I've selected the in-app purchase event and I will be able to see how many people received the notification, open it up and how many people bought in the application after that. And next we have the additional options. This is optional, but I would recommend that you fill this in depending on your notification. The Android notification channel is something that you can create to create different notifications channels. And users may actually be able to mute some of your notifications uh, within your app. So you may actually want to create different notification channels for new features, notifications, and different for promotions. Okay. And here you have the custom data and this is actually related to the remote config and once you set up your keys and values in remote configuration you can actually use them in here so for example you can set up a key screen and the value promotion in this example it will actually send the users after they tap on the notification to the promotion screen so that they will be able to actually see the promotion in the application and let's say we have the key promotion to determine which promotion the users will see because we may have several different promotions. So you may actually be able to fill in your own custom data in here. These are just examples. And next we have the option to change the priority of your notification and enable or disable the sound. I would recommend that you will enable the sound of the notification. And the last option is how long will it take your notification to expire. So let's say we select the one day and if our users will have their smartphone turned off for two days and that means they won't be able to receive our notification because it will expire in one day after we send it. But if we change it for like three days, once they turned on their smartphones, they will be able to receive your notification right away. Now let's click the review button and here you can review your settings and publish your notification. Okay, so now let's see the reporting section, which you can find in here. And here you can change the dates. And here you will see how many notifications were sent, how many were received, how many impressions they get and how many opens they get you won't be able to see how many conversions they received in this reporting section unfortunately you can export it to excel if you want if you want to see how many conversions they got you need to go to the notification section and select your notification and here you have the sends opens and conversions for every notification that you sent if you want to see all the data in bigquery you need to connect your firebase with your BigQuery account. So go to the project settings in here and into integrations tab and here you have the BigQuery and you can actually link different Firebase functionalities in here and at the bottom we have the cloud messaging and if you're an administrator of your project you will be able to turn them on in here. Once you do that the project and the tables will be visible in Google BigQuery. And once you go to the Google Cloud Platform and BigQuery, you will be able to see your project, the features from Firebase, like Firebase Messaging. Here you have the table of the data that you can query in here and pull up the Cloud Messaging data in BigQuery. Okay, so setting up and sending Cloud Messages in Google Firebase is quite simple. You need to remember to test your messages before sending them to your users. That's all for today, thanks for watching this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to watch more tutorials like that, and see you in the next episode, bye!